What's going on, family? I'm Scrapbook Boxing, Museum of the Forgotten Fisticuff Series. I want to continue to examine 100 years of world championship fights. Thursday, May 23rd, 1940. Middleweight Ken Overland defeats Sefrino Garcia and becomes the middleweight champion of the world. 15 rounds, New York's Madison Square Garden. The referee was Arthur Donovan. Judge was Steve Hamis for the New York Sack and World Middleweight Championship belt. 33-year-old Sefrino Garcia stood 5 foot 6 inches. He weighed 155 pounds and he had a 70-inch reach. Walked into the ring with a career record of 115 fights up until that point. 25 losses, 13 draws, and 72 knockouts. As for Ken Overland, he was 29 years old. He stood 5 foot 9 inches and weighed 159 pounds. He had a 70-inch reach and walked in to the ring with 109 wins, 17 losses, 6 draws, and 18 knockouts. Now, who was Ken Overland? He's to your right. Born August 15, 1910 in Chicago, Illinois. He died July 24, 1969. He was 58 years of age at the time of his death. And he would reside in Norfolk, Virginia. Fought from 1931 to 1944. Had a total bout career of 167 fights. 136 wins, 19 losses, 24 knockouts, and 10 draws. He was stopped two times. Now, Ken Overland is part of the 19-loss middleweight championship club. He had Ray Robinson, who ended his career in 19 losses. Jake LaMotta ended his career in 19 losses. He had Mickey Walker, I ran the Blade Barkley, Dick Tiger, Many middleweight champions had ended their career in 19 losses. But on the night of Thursday, May 23rd, 1940, Ken Overland would defeat Sefrino Garcia. He would become middleweight champion of the world. Friday, May 24th, 1940. World welterweight champion Henry Armstrong knocks out Ralph Zanelli five rounds in Boston, Massachusetts. He was in defense of his world welterweight championship belt. Ralph Zanelli was 24 years old. He stood five foot seven and a half inches, weighed between 142 to 147 pounds. He had a record of 107 wins. 13 losses, 8 draws, and 72 knockouts. Henry Armstrong was 30 years old. He stood 5 foot 5 and a half inches. He was a welterweight. And had a 67 inch reach. He had a record of 44 wins, 8 losses, 3 draws, and 22 knockouts. Now who was Ralph Zanelli? They called him the Ripper. From Seneca Falls, New York. He was born October 2nd, 1915. And Seneca Falls, New York. He died November 29, 2006, 91 years of age at the time of his death, and he would reside in Providence, Rhode Island. Fought from 1936 to 1952. Ended his career with a record of 149 total bouts, 93 wins, 49 losses, and 33 knockouts. Now, Rob Zanelli was in the ring with Charlie Burley. Lost to him as an amateur. May 24th, 1940. He was stopped in five rounds. One minute and 30 seconds. Referee Johnny Martin. But in the contest, his only opportunity at a welterweight championship title. He'd also be in the ring with Luther Slugger White. Ray Robinson, July 1st, 1943. We're losing 10 rounds. Izzy Genazzo. Jimmy Doyle. Fritzy Zivic, 10 rounds. He would come out on top on that fight. Coley Welch would lose twice to him. He would also fight Bobby Dykes, Johnny Bratton, Kid Gavilon, and Ike Williams. 
pretty good fighter was Ralph Zanelli. And he would take on Henry Armstrong, May 24th, 1940, on a Friday night, Boston, Massachusetts. Wednesday, July 17th, 1940. Henry Armstrong knocks out Lou Jenkins. Six rounds in New York's polo grounds. And the referee was Arthur Donovan. And he stopped the contest after Jenkins went down seven times. It was an untitled fight. And I wanted to include this in the series. Because Lou Jenkins was the current lightweight champion of the world. Henry Armstrong was the current welterweight champion of the world. And it was about that they wanted to exercise at the polo grounds. Armstrong was 30 years old. He stood five foot five and a half inches. He weighed 139 pounds. He had to get underneath the 140 pound limit. He had a 67 inch reach. At this point in his career, he had 109 wins. 13 losses, eight draws and 74 knockouts. That's actually amazing. Jenkins was 23 years old. It's also amazing. Seven years younger than Henry Armstrong. He stood five foot eight inches. He was taller. Weighed 135 and a half pounds. And he had a 68 inch reach. Had 45 wins, 15 losses, four draws, and 30 knockouts. Now, he defeated Lou Fellman, Timmy Larkin, Mike Belois, and Bob Montgomery, then Lou Jenkins. Entered into the Hall of Fame in 1977, World Boxing Hall of Fame in 1983, and in the International Boxing Hall of Fame in 1999. Two good fighters. Henry Armstrong. And Lou Jenkins. July 25th, 1940. Willie Pep makes his professional debut. Four round victory over Joey Marcus at the Buckley Stadium in Hartford, Connecticut. Now, Willie Pep, they called him Will of the Wiss. He was born September 19th, 1922, in Middletown, Connecticut. He died on November 23rd, 2006. He was 84 years of age at the time of his death, and he would reside in Rock Hill, Connecticut. He stood 5 foot 5 inches, weighed 122 to 126 pounds. He had a 68 inch reach, fought from 1940 to 1966. Had a total bout career of 241 total bouts, 229 victories, 11 losses, and 65 knockouts. He was stopped six times, once to Sandy Sadler. Now, he went one full round with Jackie Graves. Had his hand behind his back. He walked from side to side, fainted, dipped, slipped, never threw a punch, and he would win the round. Woody Pep would unfortunately have a plane crash, but he would survive that crash. And he would offer the settlement. And he refused the settlement because he wanted to fight again. And he would wind up becoming the featherweight champion of the world once again, defeated Sandy Sadler. We will get to Willie Pep's career as the series goes on. But he would fight fighters such as Sandy Sadler, Hogan Kid Bassey, Charlie Riley, many other great fighters. A salute to Willie Pep on his professional debut, July 25th, 1940. July 15th, 1940. Jimmy Bivens makes his professional debut with an eight-round victory over Paul Frazier. It was at the Marigold Gardens in Chicago, Illinois. It was an outdoor arena. Jimmy Bivens was from Cleveland, Ohio. And they called him the Cleveland Spider-Man. He was born December 6, 1919. 
in Dry Branch, Georgia. He died July 4th, 1912. Correction. Bivens died 2012. I'm thinking of 1912. He was 92 years of age at the time of his death. And he would reside in Cleveland, Ohio. Now, I met Jimmy Bivens. I met Willie Pep. Met Ike Williams. I've seen as a Charles. I was too young to appreciate who he was. But my dad took me to see as a Charles. He was in a wheelchair. He was at an event. This is back in 75. I think it was 70. Yeah, the beginning of 75, towards the end of 74. And I was able to see as a Charles. But I didn't appreciate him because I was just into boxing at that time. But I met most of these guys who started their career in 1940. And 1940 is a very special year. And we'll tie it into 1951 when we get to that point as to why 1940 was a special year for these fighters. Now, Jimmy Bivens stood five foot nine inches. He was a light heavyweight. Started as a middleweight. And he had a 76 inch reach. Began boxing in 1940 and he ended his career in 1955. The same year that Archie Moore would face Rocky Marciano. Same year as Emmett Till. 1955 was some year. He had a total bout career of 113 fights, 86 wins, 25 losses. 31 knockouts, and he was stopped five times. Now, it was a shame the way Jimmy Bivens died. He was found in feces in the attic. And he had lost 100 pounds. By that time, he was going through a lot. And unfortunately, that's how they found him. But he was in a ring with fighters such as Charlie Burley and Joe Walcott and Booker Beckworth, Lee Q. Murray, Oakland Billy Smith, Eddie Charles. Dynamite fighter was Jimmy Bivens. February 12, 1940. Eddie Charles begins his professional debut with defeat over Medley Johnson. Middletown Army, four rounds. Ezra Charles, they called him the Cincinnati Cobra. His name was Ezra Mac Charles. He was born July 7th, uh, 1921, Lawrenceville, Georgia. Died May 28th, 1975. He was 53 years of age at the time of his death. He stood six feet, he weighed 162 pounds to 185 pounds. He had a 73 inch reach, fought from 1940 to 1959. Had a total bout career of 121 fights, 95 wins, 25 losses, and 52 knockouts. He'd be stopped seven times. He would win the World NBA Heavyweight Championship belt, 1949, with a defeat over Joe Walcott. And he would twice face Rocky Marciano in 1954. He'd be stopped by Walcott in 1951. He would solidify his world championship belt in 1950, Joe Lewis, in New York's Yankee Stadium. He would defeat Charlie Burley twice, Archie Moore three times. He's a fascinating fighter, was Eddie Charles. And we'll learn about his career as the series goes on. But he would start his debut as a professional. February 12, 1940. He'd be a featherweight. 42 and 0. He's an amateur. He won most of the championships in that amateur tournament. Dynamic fighter was as Charles. Welcome as a Charles to the professional ranks. <laughs> March 15th, 1940, Ike Williams, Trenton Thunder, makes his professional debut, four-round victory over Carmine Footy. Who is Ike Williams? His name was Isaiah Ike Williams, born August 2nd, 1923, Brunswick, Georgia. He died September 5th, 1994, 
He was 71 years of age at the time of his death. I had mentioned that I met Ike Williams actually about 15 times. I met him a lot because Ike Williams used to go to a lot of affairs and events. He would also go to the uh, Boxing Hall of Fame. I met him at various dinners and so on and so forth. And he stood five foot nine inches, he weighed 133 to 142 pounds. He had a 68 inch reach. Would win the NBA lightweight championship belt. The second round knockout of a Wanda Rita, Mexico City. And he would win the undisputed lightweight championship belt, August 4th, 1947, when he knocked out Bob Montgomery for the New York Sack lightweight championship belt. Six rounds. 1938, Ike Williams would win a Trenton Times and a Golden Gloves. Same year that the great Sugar Ray Robinson would win a New York Metropolitan Bantamweight Championship. Nancy Charles would win a Featherweight Championship belt and the amateurs. Now, Ike Williams would be in the ring with Luther Slugger White, John O. Davis, Ricky Bellanos, and Bobby Ruffin, Charlie Solis, Freddie Dawson, Bo Jack, Sammy Angot, Ralph Zanelli, Kid Gavilan. These are the fighters he would defeat. And we'll be talking about Ike Williams' career as the series goes by. But all these men, Ezra Charles, Jimmy Bivens, Ike Williams, Willie Pep, but all turned professional. 1940, along, of course, with Ray Robinson. Salute to Ike Williams. Welcome to the professional ranks. Friday, October 4th, 1940. World Welterweight Champion Henry Armstrong gets battered for 8 out of 15 rounds. Batter Pittsburgh Welterweight Veteran, number one ranked, Fritzy Zivic. Zivic was a 4 to 1 underdog. Fight took place at the Old Madison Square Garden in front of 12,081 spectators. $29,212 was collected at the door. And Armstrong was four and a half inches shorter. And he was forced to stay outside the range of 50 Zivic. And inside he was heel thumbed, leaned on, spun around. That was the approach of 50 Zivic. He stated earlier before the fight that he plans on battering the eyes of Henry Armstrong. The wounded eyes, scar tissue, he wanted to reopen. He wanted to blind him. If he had to thumb him, he would do so. If he had to heal him, he would do so. Meaning rake the laces into the eyes of his opponent. Before they used to take the, the uh, laces on the gloves. Armstrong was 30 years old. He stood five foot five and a half inches. He weighed 142 pounds for this fight. He had 67 inch reach and 111 wins. 13 losses, eight draws, and 76 knockouts. He would earn $9,000, 40% of the gate as champion. A three to one bet on Armstrong. There was a rematch clause in case Armstrong would lose. Zivic was 27 years old in five months. He stood five foot 10 inches, weighed 146 pounds. He had a 71 inch reach, had a record of 100 wins, 24 losses, five draws, and 52 knockouts. He would earn $3,000, 15% of the game. Three to one bet on Zivic to knock out Armstrong. And Zivic would bet on himself $700 because he was that confident that he would defeat the older veteran. Referee was Arthur Donovan, and he sadly watched a once three-division future Hall of Famer who was a champion that would lose blood, lose his mouth guard, lose his balance, and lose the championship belt. Now, he had a 78 
in behalf of Zilly. John Potter had it five to eight. On behalf of Armstrong. Marty Monroe would have it seven to eight on behalf of Zilly. By the time the fight was in the last round, the fight was even. What would do it for Zivic? He would bang Armstrong on the side towards the back of his head. Armstrong would lose balance. And it was a push somewhat punch that dropped Armstrong, as you can see in this photo here. And Dr. Donovan would lure Fitzy Zivic into a neutral corner. It was probably about 10 seconds left before the fight was over. Had that not happened, Armstrong would have retained his title because there would have been a draw. But keep in mind, Henry Armstrong had five title defenses in 1939. Two weeks before this fight, he would have his last fight and last title defense in 1939. Now, between rounds one and six, Henry Armstrong would give Fritzy Zivic a pretty good beating. But by round eight, he began to tire. Both men went toe-to-toe. Although in round seven, it appeared to be even. In the last round, two minutes and 40 seconds, Zivic turned Armstrong around. He stunned him with combinations. Two minutes and 57 seconds into that last round. Zivic caught Armstrong. But right to the side of the head. And he shoved him at the same time. As did Tiberio Mitri. Did with Randy Turpin. Fritzy Zivic would be the new welterweight champion of the world. On the undercard of that fight was a young man from Harlem who was a Bantamweight champion in 1938. He would win the 1939 Golden Gloves when he defeated Louis Spider Valentine. And the next year he would defeat a young man by the Andy Nanelli for the lightweight open class Golden Glove Championship fights. And he would make his professional debut on this card. His name was Ray Robinson. He would knock out Joe Escavelia 51 seconds in the second round. And Ray fought 12 times that year. The Mecca Madison Square Garden between 1938 and 1940. 4-1. The New York Metropolitan Open Class Bantamweight Championship title. That was a hard title to, to win because of the competition that year. And Ray wasn't quite a teenager yet. But also in the Inner City Golden Gloves. And the New York Daily News Golden Gloves. The age of 19... Ray Robinson. So 5'11". We had 133 to 135 pounds. He had a 72 and a half inch reach. And he would begin his professional debut. Now Ray Escavelia was his actual name. His birth name was Joe Escavelia. Puerto Rican lightweight fighter out of New York. He had a record of four wins, 17 losses, four draws, and two knockouts. Had a total bout career of four wins. Out of 46 bouts, five draws. He was a last-minute replacement, as Escavaria was. He was a dishwasher, trained at the gyms, and went filling at the last minute. Just wanted to feed his family. 
And Ray was hoping that his old pal from the Golden Gloves, Blue Spider Valentine, would make the card. Unable to. Last minute replacement was Joe Escavaria. And Escavaria will lose his last five fights. One of them was to Joey Arnotti. Arnotti had lost fourth, September 24th, 1940. The biggest name on that card was Luis Castellino, who Escavaria had faced September 7th, 1940. Ray Robinson would watch in awe before his fight of Ray Henry Armstrong. It's an old fight film in the back of the locker room. He would watch his idol shadow box in the dressing room. During the second row, in between rounds 11 and 15, and he couldn't believe what he was watching. So he immediately moved up to the welterweight division because he wanted to meet Fizzy Zivic. Within that year of 41, he would face Fuzzy Zivic. And he would defeat Fuzzy Zivic. And he said he learned more from Fuzzy Zivic on how to handle a man in the ring than any other fighter. Because Fuzzy Zivic was one of five brothers. Yeah, Eddie Zivic, Pete Zivic, Joe Zivic, himself. And the tryout for the Olympic team was unsuccessful. Henry Armstrong tried out in 1932. He was unsuccessful. Ray Robinson stayed in a national competition because he was afraid of heights. He didn't want to fly. But Ray Robinson would begin his professional debut October 4th, 1940. First fight on that card. You also had Petey Scalzo on that card as well. Hey Armstrong with battered eyes. Gives a salute to Fizzy Civic. Says, I'll see you next time. And they would get it on a second time, 1941. Armstrong will be stopped in that fight. So long to a king. My number four ranked greatest fighter, Henry Armstrong. An unbelievable fighter he was. Jack the left on the nose of Armstrong. And another left on the nose by Zippy. Zippy again jabs the left on the nose. 
I'm thinking it's close. Six of short legs to the body. And a lift to the face and a leg to the jaw, Adam and Jimmy. Take a jab, the leg lift to the face. Another lift to the face. Arms so close, swing the lift. And hook back to the six of the top to the leg to the ribs. And then a lift to the side and a right arm to the chin of Jimmy. Hey, Jimmy's jabbing the lift to the face and arms so close. With a right arm to the ribs, another right to the ribs. Again, Jimmy. Jabs the left on the nose. Another left on the nose by Jimmy. And arms so close. Misses the lift to the body and a right arm to the face. Take a little jab on the nose. Armstrong stands his ground, Jimmy jabs the left to the face, suddenly Armstrong beats him. And Jimmy catches him with the left to the face, a right, another right on the jaw, the two of them, another right on the chin by Jimmy. Armstrong takes the left to the face, he comes in there with a right to the ribs, and he crowds Jimmy into the ribs, almost into a little corner. Take a left jab on the nose and the right to the chin by Jimmy. The champion, Armstrong lets in there with a the left hook to the face. Jimmy's boxing, jabbing again with the left end of the face. Another left end of the face, another left. Jimmy gives the call of the two of the ring. The taller and the uh, longer reach, I should say. He lets go a short length of the chin and lifts down an Armstrong's nose and is already slightly red. Armstrong moves in there with a lift to the body and the right eye on the head. Now they move in there. Going to a sink, he goes right up and down the jaw, landed by Jimmy with two trains. And then Armstrong caught away with a lift and left and missed with it. Right at the end of it. And Jimmy caught him with a short right up and down the chin. A lift jab, another lift jab, and Armstrong goes. Armstrong is not working as he was going to do. Now he draws his man to the ribs, but takes the right. Another right on the chin, landed by Jimmy. And then Armstrong came back with left to the right of the head. Armstrong with some big cross, and he walked with a short right up and on the jaw, landed by the...